accuracy and impartiality. These are the cornerstones of the BBC's editorial guidelines governing its output. According to the BBC, the guidelines represent the organisation's values and standards and are one of the most important documents it publishes. But for all its high-minded rhetoric, the document becomes meaningless if the BBC fails to consistently enforce it. And that is precisely the case, at least when it comes to Jerusalem. The Editorial Standards Committee of the BBC Trust, or ESC, is meant to be the supreme guardian of the editorial guidelines it writes. Yet it failed to apply those guidelines to a shockingly one-sided programme about Jerusalem. The programme, titled A Walk in the Park, was broadcast last year on Panorama, BBC One's current affairs show. It purported to show why finding a road to peace in Jerusalem is not easy. The Israelis say Jerusalem is their capital and must never be divided. The Palestinians say the east of the city is theirs and will one day be the capital of a new state. As Jane Corbyn has discovered, finding a route to peace in this city is not exactly a walk in the park. But instead of objectively analysing the roles of both parties, the programme was little more than a caricature of Israeli villains, Arab victims and little in between. Correspondent Jane Corbyn presented everything through the lens of Palestinian grievances, hectoring Israelis while accepting Arab allegations uncritically and even underscoring them in her own voice. Those who know Jerusalem warn that this is a powder keg. More than the city could be ignited if the Israelis persist in what they're doing. The buying up of houses, the archaeology, the tourist park. It's all putting the squeeze on the Palestinians who have nowhere to expand. Israeli archaeology has raised Arab suspicions of a Jewish takeover of the Muslim holy sites. They're accused of undermining the Palestinians by digging under their houses and by emphasizing that it's Jews who have lived here for thousands of years. The Israeli government's been criticized for handing the running of a sensitive national site to a settler organization with its own agenda and a selective view of history. But do you understand the Palestinians when they say you're erasing their history and that you're putting Jewish history before theirs? They feel very sensitive about the tension you're causing by buying up these... They can't expand naturally. They're just not given the permission to build. They have to often build illegally. The Palestinians say it's all part of the plan to intimidate them. Palestinians feel they're being squeezed out of East Jerusalem. Ms. Corbyn does not challenge Palestinians during the program as she does Israelis. And while she repeatedly points to Israeli actions as thwarting peace efforts, she completely ignores controversial Arab actions. For example, Panorama says nothing about pervasive Palestinian incitement against Israelis and Jews. There is nothing about Palestinian denial of Jerusalem's Jewish roots or anything about the unsupervised digging and building of new mosques in archaeologically sensitive areas. There is nothing about dumping of Israeli artifacts from the Temple Mount. Indeed, there is no critical investigation of how Palestinians are creating new facts on the ground that impact the road to peace. PAMRA, the Committee for Accuracy in Middle East Reporting in America, filed a formal complaint about the program, pointing out numerous violations of the BBC's impartiality guidelines. Impartiality is the core of the BBC's commitment to its audiences. We must be inclusive and ensure a range of views is appropriately reflected. Controversial subjects should be treated with due impartiality. And so on. But the ESC remained unmoved by the multiple violations of its own guidelines, insisting that there was no need to discuss or even reference Israeli grievances against Palestinian politicization of archaeology. In other words, it considered the program to be impartial, even without inclusiveness, broad perspective or a range of views. A segment on violence in Jerusalem likewise focused solely on an Arab injured during a confrontation with an Israeli Jew. Despite conflicting claims about what happened, the Arab involved in the clash was the only one to present his version of events in a long, emotive interview. Moreover, this was the sole example of Arab-Israeli violence in the documentary. There was no reference to deadly attacks by Arabs against Jews in Jerusalem. Nothing about the massacre of schoolboys at a Jewish seminary. 
nor anything about two separate deadly bulldozer attacks. Yet the ESC again voided its editorial guidelines on inclusiveness and impartiality by refusing to acknowledge the one-sided treatment of violence. Once again, the ESC insisted that the program had been duly impartial. Camera did not only protest the program's lack of impartiality, but also its violation of the BBC's accuracy guidelines. Those guidelines stipulate that the BBC must not knowingly and materially mislead audiences. Yet again and again, Ms Corbyn knowingly misled her audience about house demolitions, about the issuing of building permits, about Arab population growth in Jerusalem, about the ability of Israeli settlers to expel Arabs from their homes, about the Jewish connection to the Temple Mount, and more. Before long, I'm in the middle of a battlefield. The weapons are bulldozers and riot police. The Israeli authorities are demolishing Palestinian homes. When I was there just before Christmas, roads were sealed. The Israelis don't make it easy to see what's going on. Because there's about to be a demolition in this part of East Jerusalem, they've been increasing in recent days, and in fact, we got hold of a list that shows there's another 40 to go before the end of the year. That's because the municipal government has a budget that it has to use up for demolitions. So, let's see what's happening. Why were the houses really being demolished? Not, as Miss Corbyn suggests, as a weapon to make Arab residents homeless. And not, as Miss Corbyn falsely states, because Israeli authorities had to use up an arbitrary budget. The reason the homes were being torn down was because they were built illegally, without permits, in contravention of municipal zoning laws or building codes. The program misled too about the trend in demolitions. Was there an overall increase in demolitions? Were 40 more houses demolished? No and no. In fact, there was a 25% decrease in demolitions that year, placing them at a five-year low. A trend Ms Corbyn conceals by reporting only an increase in recent days. As to the demolitions, the Jerusalem municipality spokesman informed Camera. It would be prudent to ask Ms. Corbyn what happened to her alleged list of 40 planned demolitions since her filming in late 2009. You'll easily find yet another one of her distasteful distortions. Although it was quite clear well before the program aired that 40 demolitions had in fact not taken place, the BBC decided that it was unnecessary to inform viewers of this fact. BBC editorial guidelines are meant to protect viewers from such sleight of hand. We should report statistics in context. All relevant facts and information should be weighed to get at the truth. And we must check programs recorded some time before transmission to make sure that they have not been overtaken by events. The ESC, however, decided that it was reasonable to use demolition figures from the few non-representative days on which the report was filmed. They concluded that no further context was required for accuracy and that the audience would not be misled about the overall demolition trends. About the documentary's insinuation that 40 more houses were demolished, the ESC said that because Ms Corbyn was describing an intention at the time of filming, there was no need to update the audience. In another segment, Ms. Corbyn reports about a discrepancy in the granting of building permits, implying discrimination. Last year, only 133 permits were granted to Palestinians in the whole of East Jerusalem. Nearly 10 times more were given to Israelis in West Jerusalem. Were these statistics reported in context as required by the guidelines? No. While it is true that almost 10 times as many permits were granted in the West, there were also almost 10 times as many requests. So the proportion of requests approved in each sector of the city was similar. Yet despite the editorial requirement to report statistics in context, weigh all relevant information and not mislead audiences, the ESC yet again maintained that context was not essential. Is Israel really guilty of ethnic cleansing? That's what Panorama would have viewers believe. Here is how the program was introduced. Hello, I'm Jeremy Vine and this is Panorama. 
It's a new year, a new decade, but in Jerusalem, an old fight is boiling up again. They are demolishing the houses because they want to. It's uh, ethnic uh, cleaning. Palestinians are being thrown out of their homes. Israelis are moving in, even underground. The ethnic cleansing accusation is aired again later in the film, with Miss Corbyn lending credence to the accuser by introducing him as a documenter of Israeli actions. Jawad Siam is a local Palestinian activist documenting what Israel is doing. They are demolishing the houses because they want to. It's uh, ethnic uh, cleaning for Silwan, for uh, Israel. But this accusation is patently false, something that Panorama's audience is never told. Far from being ethnically cleansed of Arabs, Jerusalem has since 1967 seen vigorous Arab population growth, which has actually outpaced the growth in the Jewish population. In the 40 years since the reunification of Jerusalem, the proportion of Jews in Jerusalem's population dropped from 74 to 65 percent, while the proportion of Arabs rose from 26 to 35 percent. According to the BBC's guidelines, reporters must corroborate allegations made by contributors and test contentious views aired during an interview. But the ESC just shrugged off this inconvenient requirement. It noted that the activist was just a regular guy making an emotional cry, that he was entitled to his opinion and that ethnic cleansing was not a theme of the program. This despite the fact that it had led the introduction of the program. Throughout the program, Miss Corbyn portrayed evictions as ruthless nocturnal raids by Israeli settlers and authorities, expelling Palestinians from their homes without warning or recourse. When Arabs won't move or sell, then he gets eviction orders. Aria prefers to work after dark. Are Palestinian homeowners subject to eviction when they choose not to sell their homes? Of course not. Homeowners and protected tenants who regularly pay rent to the legal owner cannot be thrown out of their houses. Nor can justified evictions take place suddenly without warning. There are rigorous legal procedures governing evictions, procedures that the program fails to explain to the audience. The ESC, though, decided it was unnecessary to clarify that people can't be forced from their homes just because they don't wish to sell their legally owned property. Miss Corbyn also misled on Judaism's holiest site, the Temple Mount, which she described as a Muslim holy site without ever mentioning that this compound is the holiest site to Jews. Instead, she identifies Judaism's holiest site as the Western Wall. The Western Wall, or Kotel, is the outer wall of the Temple Mount compound, deriving its holiness from its proximity to the mount itself. While the wall is the holiest site where Jews are currently permitted to pray, it is the Temple Mount that is considered the epicenter of Judaism, built on what is believed to be the foundation stone of the world, the place where two Jewish temples stood before mosques were built on their ruins. But Miss Corbyn preferred to ignore the importance of the Temple Mount in Judaism, despite the fact that the BBC has corrected such errors in the past. This is how she describes the Temple Mount. Last autumn, Palestinians rioted after rumors spread that Israelis were coming to pray on the compound surrounding the holy mosques. She describes Judaism's holiest site as follows. On the Sabbath, the Adlers visit the western wall of the temple. This is the holiest place in the world for Jews. Miss Corbyn defended her error by contending that while the filming took place at the Western Wall, it would be clear to viewers that the holiest site for Jews includes the entire area. Let's get this straight. The Temple Mount is nowhere to be seen when Miss Corbyn identifies Judaism's holiest site. And when the Temple Mount is seen on film, it is identified only in terms of holy mosques. Yet despite the guidelines requirement to acknowledge errors and correct such mistakes, the ESC ruled that the audience would not have been misled on this issue. Contrary to the BBC's editorial guidelines, this panorama program misled its audience and did not include essential elements of the story about Jerusalem. The BBC Trust, which is tasked with enforcing these guidelines, did just the opposite turning its most important documents into a lofty-sounding but meaningless sheaf of paper.